So, Prashant, so good to see you again. Oh, gosh, it's been years. And um, I'm, I see that you're doing such amazing stuff with Thai Launchpad. And would you like to talk a little bit about what's happening there? Sure. So I think the last time we got together actually was at the Thai conference. This was probably about three or four years ago easily. And I think that video is still up on, on YouTube and Facebook somewhere. So it's, it's, it's fun to be doing a video with you again. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, Thai's been doing really great. We've continued to do the conferences, of course. TaiCon this year was a smashing success, as it is every year. Mm -hmm. I think we had close to 5,000 or so registrations. It just keeps getting bigger, and it, it has its own win, so it just keeps sailing on. Um, what we started doing in the last few years is that a lot of the mentors inside of Thai have started taking active investment roles. And so we launched a couple of different activities in Thai to help uh, get investors and startups together. Uh, one program was called Thai Launchpad, which is what you just asked me about. Yeah. That was set up as an accelerator. So it was a classic, you know, early stage, first time founders type accelerator. Uh, we had a life cycle on it for three years and that ended in 2016. So uh, we decided we're not going to continue to keep doing that. But in the meantime, the other program that we had, which is Thai Angels, uh, I think is very interesting for the startup community. That That's actually, it predates the Accelerator. Yes, because you've been involved in that since I've known you. Right? Correct, correct. We launched it back at the uh, end of 2010 or so. And so it's now been running you know, for almost seven years, probably more than that, if, if you look at the actual dates mm -hmm. of inception and so on. Uh, and, and that continues to thrive very nicely. We meet on a quarterly basis. Companies come and present, and uh, you know we've had exits, we've had failures. People have done well, people have not done well. It's it's the usual thing. So um, tell me, what do you think is the secret sauce um, for a startup? Being on the investor side of the table, um, what do you think a startup needs or an entrepreneur needs to actually succeed at raising some angel investment? That is such a big question. And if and I gotta tell you, if I had that secret, I would probably be an entrepreneur rather than an investor. I'd be a billionaire. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, seriously, you know, it's a really tough question to answer yeah. because it is so contextual. And, right. you know, uh, I'm sure you've done so many interviews and you've seen so many panels. And the real answer is it depends. It depends on a lot of things. Um, the, it depends on the market that you're in. It depends on the technology that you've put together. It depends on uh, the entrepreneurs and their backgrounds as a team. Uh, there's a lot of things that need to fall into place in order for a successful company to, or a company to raise angel successfully, or venture, or you know whatever round it is. And and every round that happens. So you know the angel round is just the first step, and then you still have to get the A done, the B done, and so on, all the way to exit. And and it's it's a long journey. And um, I, I know that there's challenges being an angel as well. Um, one of my best friends who you know and I know um, tells me the inside stories and I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> so there's some real challenges being that first person that invests in a startup and sometimes you just get pushed out, correct? How does that feel when that happens? Well, it's not a happy feeling for sure. Um, the... The, the, and, and you get pushed out in different ways when it happens, yeah. right? You know, the, the biggest way is that the company ends up raising a lot of money, so you just get diluted out. And typically at the angel stage, you don't always have uh, pro rata rights, as they're known in the, in the industry, the, the right to continue investing. And frankly, you know, as angels, you don't necessarily want to continue investing at, you know, a very high level. Now, I'm not, a, for example, you know, you get something like an Uber, which is a $50 billion reportedly valuated company, valuation company. And as if you were an angel in that, you, you wouldn't be putting money in at those later stages. Mm -hmm. You just take the dilution because it's very, very, uh, it's, it's very large price for, for the shares at that stage. So what do you think are the ingredients to be an angel investor uh, because of that particular challenge? I mean, obviously, venture capitalists, they also get pushed out sometimes, but nothing like what the angels have, have to go through. So what do you think are the credentials you need as far as being human yeah, yeah. <laughs> and an angel? Yeah, well, you know, if um, what you really want to do as an angel to protect yourself against those kinds of things is to find the right investments that you can then share with the VCs and the other people who potentially push you out. Because the, the really the only answer on that is is a couple of things. One is to really show your value add to the entrepreneur. Because if the entrepreneur bats for you, then, you know, the later VCs, they will take that into consideration. And we've had that. A really good example is a company that we invested in uh, at Thai Angels called PubNub. 
where uh, in their Series A, they had a choice of taking capital from a large corporate investor, and that investor would have taken the entire round, or they could have taken it from uh, a smaller VC, and that VC was willing to make room for Thai Angels to come in. And, and that was because that's what the founders told the VC. They said, you know, we really like this group. We want them to come in, et cetera. And so the VC said, sure. You know, so we, we were allocated, you know, we weren't putting in venture uh, uh, amounts, but we put in an angel amount uh, because the entrepreneur really forced that issue. The corporate VC wasn't willing to do that. And, and to their credit, they valued our relationship so much that they, they went with the VC. That's a really r remarkable story um, because I don't think from what I gather being here seven years that that would be the norm. Um, most people just grab the money and don't think about um, the relationships that they're building. Um, would you agree with that or do you think I'm off center there? You, you see it both ways, okay. right? There are, there are certainly some cases where um, the founders, they, you know, they claim to put on their fiduciary hat, right, to say, hey, I have to do what's in the interest of yes. all shareholders. Yes. All, you know, they kind of mask themselves behind that yes. fiduciary, yes. And, and they'll take the money and run. Yes. Uh, and then there are others who really believe in the, in the relationship that, and that, that it's a long-term play, that, you know, the, um, the value add of the investors is very important to them. But that has to be there, right? So if, in this case, if the founders at PubNup didn't yeah. believe that Ty could add value, they wouldn't have done that. That's so reassuring to me because um, I have a belief that, you know, we are actually all human and um, the business actually consists of humans. And if you value and credit that human value, which of course is the relationship, um, then it will actually increase your business. Um, but then I always think I'm a bit uh, over idealistic. So to hear a story like that and to hear that it happens a bit is really reassuring. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. No, it, it, it comes down to can you add value to the investments that you make? Are you going to be an active investor? If you're not going to be an active investor, then it's a different story. Then, you know, you might as well write, whether you're an angel or a VC, just yeah. write a lot of check to a lot of different entrepreneurs and hope that something on the roulette table actually hits. So it's sort of like throwing paint on the walls and seeing what yeah. sticks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Look, thank you so much, Prashant, and I'm so looking forward to the talk tonight, and um, I think it'll be great. Thank you, Pima. I'm looking forward to it too.